DCDG. Top executives renew push to get New York AG's civil fraud suit dropped. The late night messages and OIG alleged were evidence of a fraudulent conspiracy where, according to DCG's lawyers, lawful good faith efforts by DCG to support a subsidiary. Lawyers for Digital Currency Group, Barry Silbert and Michael Morrow, filed responses to New York Attorney General Letitia James's latest effort to so reported a lawsuit against the crypto company and executives. MEA's office sued DTG and the affiliated executives last year. Lawyers for cryptocurrency firm Digital Currency Group, TCG, and two of its top executive CEO and founder Barry Silbert and Soichiro Michael Morrow, the former CEO of DCG's wholly owned trading arm Genesis, have made a final effort to convince a judge to toss out. New York Attorney General and YJ Letitia James have civil fraud sued against them. The court documents filed last Friday are the latest volley in the legal back and forth between Wedge and the respondents. With crypto exchange Gemini and the now bankrupt Genesis have been accused of frightening investors by working together to cut up a gay gain $1 billion hole in Genesis balance sheet. Cause the Aubrey Edisting report makes the crop point in front of the in her lawsuit, James alleged that Genesis and DCG made false assurances on Twitter that DCG had absorbed Genesis losses from three ACs implosion, which were crafted to put investors at ease and prevented them prolonging their own their loans. But instead of actually filling the billion dollar hole with a cash injection, DCG allegedly just patched it over with a promissory note. Uh, pledging to pay Genesis $1.1 billion over 10 years at 1% interest. According to James, DCG has never made a single payment under the note. Genesis and Gemini have settled with NIA, but DCC, Silbert, and Morrow have fought the accusations of fraud, calling the suit amethyst. Each filed a motion to dismiss the case in March, vehemently denying that the promissory note was a sham, arguing that the note was fully vetted and legally binding, and that in addition to the note, DCG transferred hundreds of millions of dollars in assets into Genesis to fill the hole in its balance sheet. The social media posts about Genesis' strong balance sheet weren't lies meant to defraud, the lawyers argued, but simply corporate. Puffery. In her response, James pushed back, arguing that the tweets weren't corporate puffery, but instead a misrepresentation of existing fact purposely crafted to mislead investors of a violation of New York's strict anti-fraud law, the Martin Act. Her response to the motions to dismiss attached a transcript of messages sent by Silbert Morrow and other employees uh, during a late-night strategy meeting. After three ACs collapse in June 2022, Good faith efforts. In the latest set of court documents, lawyers for DCG agree that the late night strategy meeting took place, but argue that it's not evidence of any conspiracy. Instead, they say those communications are evidence of the company's lawful good faith efforts to support a subsidiary. DCG did what a responsible parent company should do, offering advice, private financial support, and in certain instances, reviewing and coming on Genesis Communications, DTC's lawyers wrote. In a June 28, 2022 email attached to Silbert's filing, Silbert wrote to Morrow and other employees, uh, it is certainly our hope and intention to help Genesis address the equity hole, hopefully by 6.30. To that end, the Genesis team should be working. 24 sevens with the DCG and DCGI teams to figure out all possible ways to do so. There are probably lots of different ways to do so, each with their own ramifications that we just need to all understand before we start moving assets around. The, the email, Silbert's lawyers argue, demonstrates that efforts to fill the billion dollar hall were genuine. DCGS lawyers restated their claim that the promissory. No, but the heart of the case was an entirely proper, proper financial transaction and one of the most valuable assets in the Genesis estate, one that will provide an enormous benefit to Genesis creditors far beyond what they would have received had DCG not acted so supportively without any obligation to do so. The promissory note, DCG's lawyers say, allowed Genesis to weather the storm caused by three ACs. Collapse. It wasn't until FTX imploded that Genesis was forced to halt withdrawals. Lawyers for Silbert similarly agreed that he discussed ways to support Genesis in the wake of the AC default and ultimately signed a memory note in order to do so, but denied that there was anything fraudulent had his actions. 
the fact that Silbert ultimately signed the promissory note, his lawyers say, was evidence of his good faith and continued belief in Genesis of Ibed despite its financial woes.